Hello, hope all is well. So today I thought we'd look at uh, the speaker tab in the amp block in uh, the fractal unit. It's uh, something that has quite a big effect on like the feel and uh, the vibe of the tone. And it's something that maybe some of you have messed around with or maybe not. So I thought we'd have a look at it today and the sort of differences that you can get by using this feature. So I thought the best way of showing this would be on a, a brand new preset. It's going to be very basic, so the actual preset build itself isn't as important per se, but the idea behind this is to show, well, when you're putting something together, what the default settings might be and how differences in the speaker tab can affect your tone. So let's put something together here. We'll have an in and an out. We'll hook those together. We'll add an amp and a cab in the middle, and that's all we're gonna be using today. So for the amp today, I'll select one of the newer amps that was uh, brought out, uh, which is the Brit 800 2203 High. So this is the basic setup, and we'll have a look at the speaker tab today. So what you'll notice here is that we have this auto Dynacab uh, impedance response that is turned on by default, which is, which is a good thing, actually. And uh, I'll give an example here how it changes depending on which cab we use when we use Dyna cabs. So if I go to the Dyna cab here, well, I've got two of these set up and uh, I'll use one just to, to better demonstrate the example. So at the moment it's set to a recto slant. So it's as if we're plugging into a recto slant 4x12 cab. If I change this to say uh, a 1x12 Blues Junior cab, we go back to the amp speaker tab, we'll notice it's also changed to reflect this. And likewise, if you take other amps, say the 4x12 1960 TV cab, it will also change appropriately. I think when we're using mixes, it will default to whatever's selected in the first cab slot. I'm using the FM3, I think in the FM9, and the FX3, you will have more um, cab slots or, or, or uh, mic positions that you can use, but I believe it would still always default to this first um, cab slot. So why, why is this important to note? Well, maybe you're not using Dynacabs, for example, or maybe you are, but you want a different kind of response. I'll give an example of, uh, say we're using legacy cabs, and I'll stick to just the one cab each time. So within, say, the factory cabs, we have a whole load of different cabs that we can choose from. However, when we're changing cabs here, I'll take an extreme example. Let's just take uh, this one, for example. And we go back to the amp. It will default to the default um, speak impedance curve that the amp loads with. So no matter what cab I pick here, um, you'll see that it defaults and stays to that. So why would it be important to change this? Well, thing is in, in the real world per se, um, depending on what cab you hook up to, this value will change. And when we have Dynacabs uh, selected, it does change accordingly. But when we're using IRs or legacy uh, cabs within the fractal unit, this defaults to that one setting. It might sound great, it might be perfect for what you do, but maybe you want to experiment with that value as well to see what sort of uh, sounds or feel that you can come up with. So to pick a different uh, speaker impedance curve, uh, as I said before, the amp defaults to, uh, with uh, having auto Dynacab uh, impedance on. So when we turn this off, we have this option now that we can change. So it's uh, like changing a different type of amp. We just click on this, and then we get all of these options uh, for different speaker impedance curves that we can choose from. It's quite a wide variety, but I think it makes sense when you read them. So it's the different types of cabs that, that are on offer. And it also has load boxes in here, which can be quite useful when you're comparing, say, uh, an amp to a simulation within the fractal unit or you want to get the same kind of response and so you can match the load box that's being used for the amp that you're trying to, I won't say the word profile, but sort of match and also 
um, the unit, uh, the fra sorry, the fractal model that you're trying to sort of closely match. And a quick tip, uh, if you uh, click these menus and you hit this pin button, you can then select different impedance curves or even you can use this in other windows as well, and the window will stay pinned and it won't go away. Because the usual uh, way it works is that when you open one of these menus, you click a new, uh, say, impedance curve in this case, and the menu disappears. So if you want that to stay, hit that pin button. And a second tip or trick to that is if you hold Control or I guess maybe Command on Mac and you click this, it will automatically pin this uh, menu open, which can be sort of a, a time saver if you try to do that. So for this first example, what I've done is I've recorded a very basic uh, riff uh, with uh, the looper block that I've set in front of the amp. I won't change anything on the actual amp settings itself. So it's, you know, it's these settings, which are, are very basic, <laughs> or the default settings when you load the Bray 800 in. And we're just gonna be using different speaker impedance curves as the loop cycles to give you an idea of how that sounds. That's the only thing that we're changing. <laughs> So as you could hear, uh, there's subtle or there's sometimes quite a big difference between the different impedance curves that you're using. And maybe that's useful to further dial in the feel uh, and the sound of, of, of an amp. And uh, these things are maybe um, yeah, a bit more difficult to demonstrate uh, through YouTube. But some of these make a real difference to the actual feel of uh, the amp or what you're playing through. And it can be quite useful when you're trying to further dial in uh, the sound or the feel of an amp uh, when matched with, say, uh, a legacy IR in this case that we're using. Now, it doesn't stop there because obviously when you've got these impedance curves, you can actually do some other tweaks uh, to the actual curve itself. So in the example of, if we take a recto uh, large speaker impedance curve, it has quite a big sort of push uh, at 110 hertz. And we can affect this, for example, if that's a bit too much, um, but we like the general response otherwise of the speaker impedance curve, we can lower that peak uh, using the uh, low frequency resonance uh, over here to pull that down. So we'll pull that peak down. And this is something that you can use if you feel that there's a bit too much push in that area that doesn't suit uh, the sound of the amp, but the general feel otherwise is good. And that's something that you can tweak, for example. And for these other settings on the right, I'm gonna link to the uh, Fractal Wiki that has uh, more in detailed explanations of what these things are doing. I generally leave uh, these uh, at default and the only thing I change, depending on the sort of tones that I'm, I'm going for, for heavier stuff, like really heavy things that, are, that I set up, I usually put the speaker drive at zero, speaker thump at zero as well. And I leave speaker compression at one, as I sort of like how, what it's doing to, to the tone. So I hope that was useful. Again, uh, I'm not sure how much of this comes across uh, via YouTube. But I'd suggest, you know, if you're, you're trying out different tones and you're trying to dial things in further or just try out something different with uh, your preset, I'd suggest looking at the, the speaker tab here and playing around with the speaker impedance curves. 
especially if you're using, say, IRs or uh, legacy cabs. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.